We covered finite impulse response or FIR filters in a previous tutorial and the other main type of filter is the infinite impulse response or IIR filter shown here. We can see that the right half is a typical FIR filter rotated on its side from the previous tutorial and the other part of it is like an FIR filter that feeds its output back to the input. Because there is feedback, very complex behavior and long impulse responses can be achieved for a short delay line. If we remove the left half, we would have an FIR filter and the impulse response would end after three time steps. With the feedback part, we keep recycling the signal, producing a much longer impulse response. This is how they get the name Infinite Impulse Response Filter. Let's drag an IIR filter to our application. They are all very similar but differ in subtly different ways. The best way to understand their differences is to experiment with them. We'll start with a Butterworth filter. IIR filters usually get their names from the mathematical functions that define their frequency response. As you move the cursor, you can see that there is a handle that lets you change the cutoff frequency of the filter. You can also set this value in the properties dialog to the right. As with FIR filters, you can also adjust the length of the filter, which gives a sharper response at the expense of more computer time via the order field. By changing the type of the filter, you can select the pattern of frequencies to pass or remove. Low pass allows low frequencies to pass, but excludes high frequencies. High pass allows high frequencies to pass, but excludes low frequencies. Band pass allows only a selected band of frequencies to pass. Band stop removes a selected band of frequencies. More complex filters can be made by combining multiple filters in series, chaining outputs to inputs, or parallel by summing outputs. Let's look at a different IIR filter. Let's drag an IIR elliptic filter to our application. This is the most complex IIR filter, but it will help us understand the other ones. Most of the other IIR filters can be made from the elliptic filter. This time there are handles to control the passband ripple, stop band ripple, the width of the transition band, and the cutoff frequency. As with FIR filters, you will have to trade filter length or order, transition band width, and ripple with each other depending on your requirements. Let's experiment with the other IIR filters. The Butterworth has a flat passband and stop band and a wide transition band. Chebyshev Type 1 has controllable passband ripple and a flat stop band. Inverse Chebyshev Type 2 has controllable stop band ripple and a flat passband. The elliptic has adjustable passband ripple, stop band ripple, and transition band width. With a Bessel, only the cutoff frequency can be adjusted. Bessel filters have a group delay that is reasonably constant across the passband, reducing phase distortion, which we will cover later. While IIR filters are extremely fast and can provide very sharp changes in frequency response compared to FIR filters, they have at least one major drawback, phase distortion. Phase distortion occurs because signals of different frequencies are delayed differently when crossing the filter. If you click on the graph's group delay icon, you will see a graph of how much a signal of a specific frequency is delayed. If you do the same thing for an FIR filter, you see a straight horizontal line, meaning that all signals are delayed by equal amounts, which is good. For elliptic filters, Phase distortion is especially noticeable at the edge of the passband. If we look at the structure view, you will notice that instead of having one long filter, it has been split into smaller subfilters or sections called biquads. Having a large amount of feedback in the same filter can cause the filter to be unstable. Splitting it into biquads solves this problem. In the next tutorial, we will cover topics such as transfer functions, poles, and zeros.